second one is quality and depth of conversations. Man, are people excited about what they do. They really talk about it. They give you all the features and benefits, and they just kind of throw up in the office all these great figures about their business and what they're going to do and what they've done, and probably have some cute anecdotes and some great slides and PowerPoints, but they don't ask the questions. The customers don't feel heard. So then, the other piece is having great conversations. So really interesting that um, Gong, which is an artificial intelligence-based coaching system for salespeople, kind of interesting, gong.io if you want to check it out, had some interesting data, which I've been using this stat forever, but I actually made it up 20 years ago. Don't tell anybody. And that was, I said that the ideal sales process involves, when you're sitting down with a customer, listening 70% of the time and talking and asking great questions 30% of the time. Most salespeople do the reverse, right? So they ask a few questions and then they lunge into the pitch. And they throw enough at them, they hope they hit the target. And sometimes they do. Uh, and what's interesting is Gong found, after analyzing literally thousands and thousands of phone calls, because they connect their software to CRM, like Salesforce, so they can tell which salesperson is closing the most deals. And what they found, there was a direct correlation between uh, winning in sales, being above average, and talking less than 50% of the time on a sales call. There was also a significant shift around salespeople who talk about price in the last 25% of a phone call, not in the first 20, uh, 75%. Most low performers talked about price in the first half. So you need a specific, now how do you get people to do that? Part of it is having a structured process for needs analysis. Having your questions built in, not doing your needs analysis off the cuff. I'm guilty of this, I'm like, I've been doing this forever. I can walk into somebody's office and ask questions and close a deal, sure. And then I forget the vital question or I ask a confidential one too soon, right? Or I miss rapport building questions. And so actually having a solid needs analysis process that's well mapped out could really help improve your sales performance. And lastly is nurtured. So lead nurturing is simply the act, once you have a contact, whether they're a client or a potential client, is staying in touch in a value-added way consistently. Not, how do you want to buy? How do you want to buy? Hey, do you like me now? Uh, but actually, uh, here's, here's a value-added white paper. Here's an invite to an event. Uh, here's some industry insights. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your merger. Here's a lead for you, right? And so these types of touches on a regular basis. And so what Annuitist Group, and I keep joking that I got to learn how to pronounce this because I keep people keep thinking I'm talking about Annuitist Group, but it's actually <laughs> Annuitist Group did a study that found that nurtured leads are 47% lar make 47% larger purchases than non-nurtured leads. And according to Forrester Research, companies that excel at lead nurturing generate 50% more sales leads at a 33% lower cost per lead, right? So having a process for ongoing follow-up is vital.